Hello, Britball Nation. I'm Nick Wilson Town, editor in chief here at doublecoverage.com, and welcome to the scoop following a massive weekend of Britball. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This past weekend we saw the conclusion of the Women's Sapphire Series as well as the opening games of the Baffer National League's adult season, so here's your scoop of the best bits of the past weekend of Britball. Thanks to the support of Baffer Women's Football, DC were able to head up to Leeds and cover the National Championship Finals and even got involved in the presentations and MVP polling. Alongside the event in Leeds there were also the fourth and final tourneys for the two Division 2 conferences and we saw two promising programmes lift their first ever conference crowns. In the North and West Conference, the Teesside Steelers wrapped up a dominant campaign with a win over Cardiff that sealed the deal on their first conference title. A long-standing pillar of the British women's game, the Steelers have produced some of the top ballers who are battling it out in Leeds on Saturday, so it's great to see the Teesside team earn themselves some recognition of their own. In the MVP stakes, Team DC's own Tash Crump earned herself the North and West MVP honours after returning from injury to ball out for the Staffordshire Surge through the latter three tourneys of the series. Meanwhile, in the south and east, the race for the conference crown came right down to the wire, decided in the final fixture of the series as the early frontrunners in the conference, the Portsmouth Dreadnoughts, and the Gotten Hot Wembley Stallions went head to head. The Stallions had been gaining momentum over the latter two tourneys and sealed their first ever conference crown with a shutout win over Pompey, who will nonetheless be chuffed with a second place finish in their inaugural season. Josie McKinnon of the Oxford Saints picked up MVP honours after an impressive series as the key offensive weapon for the Young Saints side. Which then brings us to Leeds. Disappointing news early in the week when we learned that neither the East Kilbride Pirates or the London Warriors would be able to attend the final tourney to play for ranking, meaning six sides descended on West Park Rugby Club Leeds to play for ranking, for pride and for the women's full contact national championship. A hard fought semi-final saw the Leeds Chargers emerge victorious over the Hertfordshire Tornadoes at the third time of asking so far this year, running back CJ Harrison busting some big plays to the outside and giving the Leeds side a lead that the Tornadoes offence couldn't quite close down. This pitted the host team against the mighty Birmingham Lions in the final, who haven't opened with a convincing win against the Manchester Titans, were looking to hoist their fourth straight national title. Before this kicked off, however, we saw the Derby Braves and Edinburgh Wolves go head-to-head, -head, battling for the fifth place ranking. Following a rousing speech from the head coach and a momentum-shifting strip fumble for six, the Wolves overturned a heavy defeat against the Braves back in round two of the series to seal the fifth place national ranking. Meanwhile, despite a scare as the Manchester Titans took an early lead, the Tornadoes took the third place national ranking thanks to the outstanding balling of overall Division 1 MVP Becky Martin, who iron womaned her way through the game, making huge plays on both sides of the ball, to essentially post up almost all of Hart's 40 points in their 40-20 victory. If you're interested in learning more about this year's MVPs, we'll drop a link to our article over on doublecoverage.com and in the description down below. Come the big game, which we'll be sharing full footage of later this week, and the Birmingham Lions put on a clinic of quality football. GB Lions vets such as Joe Kilby, Ruth Matter and Hannah Pye showing why they're the heart of the national team as they drove the Lions offence to repeated scoring drives right out of the gate. The Lions D did a great job of containing Harrison and the Chargers and the first few Leeds drives were snuffed out before the host side salvaged some pride with a catch in the corner of the end zone. The Lions earned their fourth straight national championship with a convincing 56-6 victory to round up what was a beautiful sun-drenched day in Leeds with a great atmosphere that the rest of the Britball nation could really learn something from. Moving to Sunday and we kicked off the Baffin National League's adult season with some great clashes up and down the Britball nation. First and foremost we saw the Premiership North get underway with a newfound rivalry clash between the Prem New Bloods, the Edinburgh Wolves and long time top Scots, the East Kilbride Pirates. By all accounts it was one hell of a game with the lead changing hands repeatedly before the underdog Wolves entered the fourth quarter with a two score lead ready to rumble the pundits before the season's barely gotten underway. Still. Clutch plays from the Premiership Vets allowed them to claw it back, time expiring on a 26-26 tie that only emphasises that the next time these two teams meet in Week 5 should be an absolute cracker of a matchup. To Division 1 and we saw two of our three former top tier sides struggle in their opening outings, with both the South Wales Warriors and the Coventry Jets falling to narrow defeats, though the London Olympians finally broke a losing streak going all the way back to June 2015. In Division 2 we saw a good number of rather one-sided matchups as teams shake off the off-season rust, with both the Chester Romans and Hertfordshire Cheetahs posting up their first 50 burgers of the year in their season openers. Mixed results for our newcomers to the league as both the Nottingley Raiders and East Essex Sabres both competed well in their inaugural league fixtures before falling behind in the second half. 
Meanwhile, the Morecambe Bay Storm impressed in that opener, taking a comprehensive 46-6 win away from the Northumberland Lightning. We saw some pre-season favourites state their claims on their conferences with big opening day wins, and all in all it was an awesome start to our summer seasons. On that note, a quick reminder nation that this summer in our ongoing quest to grow the game, we've put together a team of editors ready and waiting to take your game day highlights and splice them together to share the great balling going on across the nation with the widest possible audience. We gave a taste of what we had planned this past Uniball season, but frankly there were simply too many highlights and too few hours in a day for our video team at the time which consisted of, <laughs> well me. However, this summer we've had experienced editors step up to the plate from across the Britball nation and beyond, and so the only thing we're missing is the game tape. We're obviously hoping to get out to as many games as we can this summer, but ultimately we're never going to capture all of the balling we want to, so we need your help. Go talk to your committees, your media guys, and get the highlight submissions across to us following each weekend so that we can show off your big plays. You can share footage with us through whatever means you like, and we've even put together a group on Facebook that we'll link to down below where you can get in touch with any queries you might have to ensure we're getting the best plays out there to the biggest possible audience. Keep your eyes peeled this week for our roundup reviews of the Sapphire series as well as highlights from the day itself and full finals footage of the big game. Alongside this we'll have predictions and power rankings for the Baffa Adult League as well as kicking off our under 19 and under 17 coverage. But before I leave you a reminder that we at DC are only able to bring you all this coverage so long as we have the support of you, the Britball Nation. To that end, we're currently running a crowdfunding campaign over at gofundme.com slash DBL coverage with the aim of raising funds to help us keep doing what we're doing only ideally do even more of it. We hope you like this new format of the scoop and my mug wasn't too off-putting. And if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up over on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of the new video content coming later this week. And in the meantime, of course, play hard, play safe, and a big thank you to all of those heroes of the Britball Nation who have already stepped up, headed over to gofundme.com slash DVL coverage, read our plans for the future of the British game, and like what they've seen so much that they've already chipped in. It's only through your support that we're able to do what we do.